today, um, we've got a diatomaceous earth video. I'm going to talk to you about all the different uses and what I'm going to be doing today. We actually use diatomaceous earth in the chicken food instead of the water because um, they're water in the food grade kind. You can't use the other kind, just the food grade kind. Um, otherwise, it would not be good for them, but it would be too strong. But um, we use that to help naturally get rid of and prevent parasites and, you know, bacterial, fungal infections, and things like that. And it also, um, it also keeps bugs out of your feed. Diatomaceous earth is just um, a natural, basically, pesticide. And actually, it's um, essentially fossilized algae is what I, um, you know, read from just looking online and everything. And you can actually use this stuff in, you know, human uh, dietary supplements for your own health. But you have to make sure that you have the right dosage because if you get too much of this stuff, it can really make you sick. I have chickens running around everywhere just because... I have this fence here for the garden. Doesn't mean that they won't hop over it, because sometimes they do. They hop right over it and they go right in there. So, the sad thing is that if something like a little butterfly ingests that, um, you know, it kills any insect. So, it would kill the butterfly too. That's why for the garden, I don't use diatomaceous earth on the whole garden, and I don't use it unless I absolutely have to. Um, you know, if something's just getting demolished, I'll have little choice. Um, my kale were getting demolished by aphids and things, just different, different things. And so I had to put it on there. Um, the butterflies actually like to stay on that side of the garden. They're attracted to something there. I don't know what they're attracted to. Underneath this peat moss and um, just uh, soil, topsoil, it's a mixture topsoil. Underneath that actually is some chicken poo and um, ash um, from the fireplace all mixed in. Um, just a little bit, you know, not too much. And I use that as a sort of a natural fertilizer. Um, so they may be attracted to that smell of the chicken poo. I don't know. There may be a chunk of it over there somewhere that I didn't fully mix in. And maybe that's what they're after. So I'm going to avoid that side. The potatoes, um, you know, they're pretty, I mean, not totally bug proof. But they have their own defenses. Um, so they don't really need anything. And right now, knock on wood, um, our peas and our uh, tomatoes are doing pretty good. Um, our potatoes are doing pretty good. It's just the kale and um, the spinach and the lettuce that are really um, not doing so hot. And later in the year, I do get those white, giant white grubs that like to eat the stems of these squash so I did put some in there just uh, precautionary but this is the coolest thing I don't know if they all come with this but this thing is the coolest thing you it lets you aim pretty accurately where you want it and it lets you get underneath the leaves too now you want to either wear a mask or stand back when you do this because you don't want to inhale um, this stuff it probably won't, you know, do anything bad, but it's just not a good idea um, to get that in your lungs. It's a lot like, you know, inhaling calcium dust. You don't want to do that either. It's harmless, but not good to just inhale a whole bunch of it. People who are sensitive to it might get a little um, irritated in their lungs, too. So it's just not a good idea. Even all natural stuff, you know, if you use it the wrong way, if you breathe it in can do a little bit of damage and again I'm not big on doing this unless I've tried everything else and there's no other way around it so it's really hard to aim while having the camera on but
you get the idea. You, I mean, you can point this thing straight up and it'll still uh, squirt out. So, And if you are putting it in the chicken's water instead of their food, um, you can use this to help mix it in the water. But it just, you know, um, it makes their water not as fresh. You have to change it a lot more often before you get down to the bottom of the water pail. You like halfway through, you have to change it. And so that's why I don't, you know, it's, it's not just that it makes the water cloudy. That's not what I'm talking about. It actually starts stinking. So just, just out of, you know, trying to make their water as fresh as possible, I put it in their food. And if it stays dry like that, I found that, um, you know, it, it doesn't, spoil anything it, like it does in the water um, again in moderation you want to make sure you have the correct dosage you want to make sure you read on the bag what is the correct dosage for uh, say chickens because if you put too much in their feed they can get an overdose of it just like you could if you uh, took too much of it for a supplement but it's just a natural way to prevent or get rid of worms, intestinal parasites, things like that. And the last use is to put this uh, in a place where your chickens um, dust bath a lot. And when they scratch and, and roll around in the dust bath, um, that diatomaceous earth will get on their feathers and their legs and everything. And it will help um, get rid of feather mites and leg mites and all sorts of you know, external parasites. And if you see a bunch, a whole bunch of ants around your house or uh, termites or something that's, you know, doesn't um, always get killed with regular old pest control stuff, wherever the trail is, wherever those trail of ants are, you can put it on there and it'll get rid of them that way. Sort of like a, a, a spot on treatment instead of doing the whole house like that. Um, I guess you could, but th there would be no need because those organic sprays are so much easier. Um, anyway, it's uh, always here on the farm um, because of all the reasons I just mentioned and because our a lot of our house, not all of it, but a lot of our house is wood and termites and ants just love wood. So I'm going to go um, over to the wood pile now and show you something else that you can do with it. This is some of our firewood that I'm storing for next winter. Underneath this porch, it keeps it dry. It's a good place for it, but I don't want termites getting in the wood and then getting in the house. So, I just spray a line. And it's hard to do it with holding a camera, but basically I'll get way down in there and get all the way down to the bottom too. So if you use it right, this stuff will be your best friend. And again, it's all natural. Look at that, they even have a picture of a chicken on it. Sorry, ADD moment. And while it may not fix all your problems, it'll fix a lot of them.